Okay, you're going to like this. Here we have our sequence of odd numbers and our sequence of squares, and we've written the relationship. One of the ways we've looked at the relationship is this way numerically. But remember, we want to show it numerically, in words, visually, and then also in symbols. So we need to do this in symbols. So that's what we're going to do in this video right here, is write this in symbols, that relationship. So let's look at the odd numbers right here. These are all just numbers, but this is a sequence. And so I can generalize it a little bit if I want by calling it, I'll call it the sequence A, and I'll use a subscript for the first term. So this is A sub one is the first term in that sequence. This is A sub two, this is A sub three, and the sequence goes like that. So the third term in sequence A is five, second term in sequence A is three, First term in sequence A is 1. Okay, sequence of squares, different sequence. So look, I'm going to give it a different letter. So I'm going to call this B1, B2, B, whoops, 3, dot, 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 and so on. So B1, B2, B3. Now I could go down here and say, well, what is the nth term? I can see the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, sixth term, but what about any term? We want to generalize this, and the way we do that is by saying, what does the nth term in that sequence look like? And we call that b sub n. So to find out what that is, all you have to do is see what the relationship is between the subscripts here in the sequence and the numbers in the sequence itself. These subscripts tell us the place where the that term occurs in the sequence. So B3 means it's the third term in the sequence, but its value is 9. Well, you can see, I square 3, I get 9. Square 2, I get 4. Square 1, I get 1. B sub n is going to be n squared. So there, I've generalized the sequence of squares by saying it's 1, 4, 9, dot, 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 n squared for the nth term on after that. So let's do the same thing with the sequence of odd numbers. I'll say this is the nth term in that a sequence, so a sub n. What is it? Well, it's a little harder to see, so I'm just going to give it to you. It is 2n minus 1. Now, if you look at that for a while, you'll see, well, 2n would be an even number. Minus 1 is going to be an odd number. But let's check. Let's let n be equal to 1. So a sub 1 would be 2 times 1, which is 2 minus 1, which is 1. It works. Uh, if I put uh, the subscript 2 in, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3, I get the third term. Put 3 in, 2 times 3 is 6, minus 1 is 5, so on and so forth, so it works. So the nth term in the sequence of squares is n squared. The nth term in the sequence of odd numbers is 2n minus 1. So how do we show this relationship using the sort of generalization here with the symbols? We say this. If I add 1 plus 3 plus 5, plus dot, 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 plus n terms in the sequence of odd numbers, so 2n minus 1. If I add the first n terms in the sequence of odd numbers, that's what this represents, I get n squared. So there is that relationship written in symbols. Everything that you see up here is contained in this statement right here. If you can get yourself to realize that 2n minus 1 is the nth odd number in the sequence of odd numbers right here. So I add the first two odd numbers, I get the second square. First three, third square. First four, fourth square. First n odd numbers, I get, of course, n squared. So there is our relationship between the sequence of squares and the sequence of odd numbers written in symbols.